Good morning, everybody. I believe nine o'clock has arrived. And so I just thought I would turn the phone on as we gather for Faith Matters. There we go. Just had a tech hiccup. I'm actually a little bit going slowly because I know that many people who just attended in person our 8 a.m. service are going home right now to log into Faith Matters. So with them in mind, I'm going to take an extra second. And also, um, who knows? No, Brian, you got to sit right there because you're going to be on camera, brother. brother. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> and you need to log on. When you, when you get it, it's, it's Epiphany is the password with a capital E. Here? Is this okay right here? That's perfect. Yeah, keep a couple of feet from Bonnie. All right. Um, hey. I want to share. Look, Rosalie has just signed in. So, Rosalie... Today, doing Faith Matters with me is the Reverend Deacon Bonnie Polly. Welcome, Bonnie. And perhaps the biggest fan of Faith Matters of all of Christian history, Mr. Brian Morgan. Good morning. Good morning. Great to have you both. The reason we're running a little late today is that the preacher at the 8 a.m. service, who I will confess was me, was did... Long -winded. He went past the usual eight minutes. Where do I find what I'm looking for? Look for your Wi-Fi signals. I did it already. And then I got it. It says Epiphany Church. Uh huh. Then you go to the Facebook page. Go to Facebook. Epiphany Episcopal Church. Once you get to Facebook, put in the search bar Epiphany Episcopal Las Vegas. Okay. And then we'll pop up. So I'll start reading. Gary Lee, good morning. Carol Wagers, good morning. Laura Cannon says, hi, Brian. Good morning. Good morning, Laura. Rosalie says, miss you, Brian. Well, I miss you, too. And I'm going to put this over here so we're all at least a little on camera. I'm going to let people gather for another minute. Hello, Skylar. Welcome. Kelly, welcome. I'm going to let it go another minute, and then I'm going to read the gospel today from Matthew. And our great theologians will all bring meaning and interpretation to it. Good morning, Judy Watts. Good morning, Heather Bowman. Great to see you all. Okay, you find it? Oh, and by the way, uh, Brian, Bonnie, turn your volume all the way down or we get horrible echo. Okay. And um, then just you read the comments and they will hear you if you talk loudly. You'll be being picked up by the microphone on this phone. Yes, Betty Jean. You want these back in the office, right? You can leave them right on the, the, the deck, like by my uh, bread machine. Uh, and I'll take okay. them back, unless you're going there anyway. Did you burn the... Uh hand sanitizer over from the office or you did not? I know I brought one because we had one the whole time. No, Chris said she brought that one. Uh, then it might be still sitting right okay, on the counter. I just wanted to make sure. Okay, thank you. Now I had it and now I lost it. Okay. I'll close this door. Okay. All right, I'm going to read the gospel today which is from the 21st ch chapter of Matthew. We're hoping that Bonnie and Brian will sign on and be with us and we'll catch up. When Jesus entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, by what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I will also ask you a question. If you tell me the answer, then I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven, or was it of human origin? And they argued with one another, If we say from heaven, he will say to us, Why then did you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, we are afraid of the crowd, for all regard John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus, We do not know. And Jesus said to them, Neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. What do you think? 
A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, Son, go and work in the vineyard today. He answered, I will not. But later he changed his mind and went. The father went to the second and said the same. And he answered, I go, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said, the first. Jesus said to them, Truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. And even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Amen. Now, are you guys seeing the comments? No, but... As they come up? I'm seeing you. Here, let me... Uh, I'm trying to get into the group here. Is it notifications? Yes, click on that and see if it... Sometimes if you just press... The, is your screen screen sensitive? Oh, look, Keith. Oh, no, that's not it. Are you guys seeing the comments? Mm -mm. Well, I'll tell you what, I'll read them to you then. Okay, once again, welcome to everybody. And I want you to know that Brian and Bonnie are with us because they found the Facebook, but they're not getting it so the comments are feeding. I will read your comments aloud and they can comment on them. Kelly Morgan says, the one told the truth, even though it was uncomfortable, risky, and eventually did the right thing. The other lied. Interesting point. Rosalie says, welcome to Epiphany, Bonnie. Ryan, uh, I bet you joined us in spirit. And uh, there you go. Now you have to put your volume down. Yeah. But everything else, you stay the same. Ryan, I bet you joined us in spirit. Okay. Yeah. Now the volume's down. Are you, are you getting the comment bubbles yet? See, on mine, I just touch it, and then they come up. Let's see if you press comments, do you get them? Oh, probably. They should come up, like, on a, uh, yeah, for whatever reason, they're not. And I don't know why. I've... Uh, Carol Wagers, I missed 8 a.m. because I had such a busy day yesterday and overslept. Sorry, I will be better next Sunday, says Carol Wagers. And Heather says, Ryan, James Coy, you still have 10 a.m. And that's true. We all have 10 a.m. And 10 a.m. is not even all that far away now. Oh, I got it. Lucky. You finally got the comments coming up? Uh-huh. How about you, Brian? Uh. Maybe read, maybe you put the um, Bonnie's device between the two of you. Okay, I mean, I've got a great device here if I could just... Carol Wagers, the first son was truthful, but later did what he should have. He honored his father by deciding to do as he had been asked. Hello, Carol Thorson, you're home, and it was great to have you here at the 8 a.m. Nancy Ellen, I will be here for, I will be there for 10, great. Even my plans keep changing, says Heather Bowman. Yeah, I mean, back to the gospel lesson, it really could be that the son who first said, no, I'm not going to the vineyard, really thought that he had legitimate, valuable plans, and so he was just saying to his father, no, I'm not going. But then later realized, no, his father was reasonable and wise in asking him to go, and so he did. Rosalie says, Jesus was using the Socratic method of teaching, great teaching. Carol Thorson, it was wonderful to be there. And Carol Thorson, that was a nice uh, COVID hug we had. And thank you for your COVID hug. Carol Wagers likes Rosalie's erudition. We always do. Finding the comments yet? Uh-huh. Okay, you're all on board. How about you, Brian? Let me have your I, device. See if I can get I you up. I found them, but the, I lost them now. I'm trying to get our special guests for the day up to where they're 
see in the video with us, let's see, if you go to videos, what do you get? Yeah, we're getting the um, we're getting the picture, but not getting the comments for whatever reason. Got, Here you go. I got the comments now. Do I wish my picture? Here you go. Oh, oh, thank you. You just scroll down. They come in in order, Brian. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> well, um, I'll just ask you a question, Brian. And what you got for us today? What'd you think about today's gospel? And what'd you think about the service? Well, I thought the service was well done, but in particular, the sermon was like a home run out of the park. That was just one of the best sermons I've ever heard, Father Chris. Well, thank and you. For anybody who missed it, um, if you're doing it again at 10 o'clock, I... I am not. <laughs> we have a 10-year-old, very precocious and wonderful child, Sylvia Lanker, will be giving an opening... Um, sharing about how she knows that Jesus loves her, and then Reverend Deacon Bonnie Polly will preach the rest of the sermon at 10. It was a one-off. Well, for anyone who missed it, that was really an amazing sermon by it Father was. Chris. It was wonderful. So, I commend him for that. Well, can you share with them maybe the, a highlight, that, like an invitation, or a, what? Something is there something that could be shared with that what, what meant the most to you? I don't know, only you know. Well, you, you shared something deeply personal and painful in your own life and, um, and tied it into, um, you know, today's scripture. And I, I just thought it was an amazing sermon. And, and that really, um, that really drove it home for those of us who've, who've got anything in their life for which uh, we need God's forgiveness, um, Father Chris really laid out how to, how to seek it. And I thought that was really terrific. Thank you. I guess I can share what I, uh, uh, just the, the final sentence or two is, I feel like any of us can be, clearly Jesus is lifting up the faith and witness of the tax collectors and the prostitutes here, and they were the lowest of the social low in terms of socioeconomic respect, how they were looked down upon by society. And yet he's saying that they, when they went to John the Baptist to be baptized, they received the full forgiveness of God and God's fullest approval. And they gave themselves entry into heaven by being so brave and by bringing their brokenness, um, and this is basically something we can all do regardless of what our profession is. We all have areas of brokenness and shame that we can take to God, that we can have John baptize, or that we can put at the foot of the cross. If he can forgive IRS employees, he can forgive anybody. Classic Brian Morgan. Did you, Brian says, if God can forgive IRS employees, all of us can be forgiven. Amen. <laughs> Let me catch up with some comments here. Jonah also said no to God, but changed his mind, but had to be terrified first, says Rosalie. Are you seeing these comments now? Yes. Okay. Good point, Rosalie. Carol, Heather, I make great plans, which then turn out to be not so great. Better to get input. Carol Wagers, oh, now you're making me feel bad that I missed the sermon. Slothful me. <laughs> even, Carol Wagers, even sloth is forgiven by God. Embrace your forgiveness, sister. <laughs> no matter what it is, it's all. And uh, Brian, Bonnie, just so you know, when you see Carolyn Davis, that's a pseudonym for a woman named Nancy Ellen. Oh. So Nancy Ellen says, can it be put on our website um, Nancy Ellen, without going into any great detail, the sermon I preached at 8 a.m., I only would have preached if I knew two things were true. One, it was not on camera. It was an adult uh, sermon, and I wouldn't preach it if I thought there were a chance a seven-year-old were listening or a three-year-old. And uh, because it's, as I said in the sermon, for grown folk, 
um, I will not be doing a live stream of the same sermon. My hunch, though, is if you ask around and you ask some of the 40 people who are here, they can give you a good and accurate encapsulation of what I preached and maybe save you some minutes because I did not preach for six minutes this morning. Judy Watts says, I'm brother number two. I mean to do the right things, but get distracted and procrastinate. Judy Watts, thank you for your honesty. I think if we're all honest, we all of us have been brother number two on some topics. Thank you for your understanding, Nancy Ellen. Bonnie, do you have something to say about the gospel? Any thoughts that you would like to share with our well, assembled think, theologians? Uh, I think uh, you led uh, uh, your marvelous words uh, was a lead in for uh, everyone's brokenness. And no matter what our brokenness is, we can take it to the uh, foot of the cross. And uh, I was uh, amazed during the sermon, and then when you started speaking of Jesus, it, it, it take, take everything to the foot of the cross. For the first time, I think, ever, I saw Jesus sitting, and I saw his feet, and you can put everything right down there. Amen. And that was kind of exciting for me. I bet. Thank you for sharing that. So, Thank you so much. I was sitting in a big chair, and uh, I don't know why I finally saw it. I've always wanted to see it. So today, you so believe today, during the 8 o'clock service, you had your first vision of Jesus. Of, of Jesus, yes. I'm, you're giving me goosebumps. And oh, me too, because I never have, I've never have had that blessing and uh and i had it this morning and, I, and of course then you know you want to keep it i got it two times but I praise it god morning. well that's so, wonderful yeah think you could inject that into your 10 a.m sermon <laughs> on the fly i know you could <laughs> not, um, not that i would ever tell you what to preach i don't know i'm not on the fly person <laughs> scribble it in before the service <laughs> oh gosh brian i'm gonna put you on camera did you want to Share some more insights. Uh, I, you know, I, I would say that I, I could feel that or sense that as well, that same vision. So that is pretty amazing to hear that. We really did get our Jesus on this morning, didn't we? Oh, totally. Yeah. At 8 a.m., yeah. Jesus really was, it was just, hanging out there on the patio it was at Epiphany. It was rocking. It was, it was just wonderful. Yeah, that was really outstanding. I'm gonna, I just want to have. I want that to happen again. <laughs> you Jesus greedy. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> okay, let me. I'm, I'm turning back around so I can read comments again. Carol. Carol Wager says, Carol Thorson, can I call you later to hear about the sermon? Carol Thorson says, sure. Heather Bowman, wonder how we would all feel seeing such an amazing vision. Carol Thorson, Jesus was there. Judy Watts, Judy Watts, sir, may I have some more, please? Oh, well, while we're bragging, wasn't it wonderful, Bonnie and Brian, that we also had, uh, you know, the couple people come for healing as well? Yeah. Bonnie was kind enough, since she, of course, is an ordained deacon in God's holy and apostolic church, she is able, willing, and lovingly distributed communion so that right after the prayer of consecration, Mary Nicholson and Cindy Berg and I just stepped over to the gravel and said prayers for a few people. And it was just more and more of the same holiness that Bonnie and Brian just referred to. It was, but, you know, I, I don't want to suggest like, oh, you guys missed out. Truly, I believe it is a fact you can call Jesus to your life right this second. Mm -hmm. You can call Jesus your life five minutes from now. If you want to refill your coffee cup first and then have Jesus come sit next to you on the couch, ask for it. Ask for it with as much confidence as you can muster. And here's the good news. If Jesus doesn't come this minute onto your couch, 
Jesus will come at an even better time. Maybe where the element of surprise, because Bonnie, you weren't expecting that, right? But there he was. Keep asking, and when Jesus does show up, you will immediately understand that was the right time, the right place, and the time where it would be the biggest gift to you. You with me? I did one thing. What a blessing it was to have Father Vince there today as yeah. well. Wasn't it? Yes. Yeah, we were clergy rich, weren't we? Yeah. And, really. and congregation rich. He is, he is really an amazing uh, priest himself, and, and uh, Epiphany is very lucky to have him. Um, I'm going to leave the camera on you, Brian, but while you bring up the topic of clergy, I do want to mention to all you at home that Father Rick is returning soon, and his first day back in the Epiphany Saddle will be this Tuesday when he and I are scheduled to do the 9 a.m. live stream together. That will be his uh, first liturgical and uh, ecclesiastical return after a well, well-deserved two-week vacation. So Tuesday's the day, and I'm looking forward to his being back, and I'm sure we'll um, you know, all welcome him with love. We will not inundate him with secondary and tertiary tasks that might be able to wait for a few days. We'll let him settle back in joyfully and happily. Well, and it was wonderful home. having Vince today. I'm sorry, Brian? I just say welcome home, Father Rick. Amen. We do some more reading here. Do you guys have the time? What's the time on yours? 9.22. Okay, 9.22. Rosalie, one more thing to make me feel guilty. Don't go there, Rosalie. <laughs> Carol Thorson doesn't need his people in a building to speak. If we listen, we hear. Amen. Preach, Carol. Heather Bowman. The, Heather's saying the same thing as me. Rosalie, don't feel guilty. You are always with us, and we are with you. We know your situation. Carol Thorson, I had a visit once many years ago. I've never forgotten. Father Vince is a treasure. Amen. Judy Watch, Judy Watts, Father Chris, you will need a vacay. You know what, Judy? I, we might be being inspired because I was thinking about that myself. I thought, you know what? I wouldn't mind a week off somewhere in here too myself and, you know, maybe take my wife someplace new that we haven't seen. Father Vince is a true treasure from Rosalie. Amen. I have to say, Deacon Bonnie Polly is certainly a treasure too, and I would like to thank all the members of Christ uh, Church, Christ Episcopal on Maryland Parkway for uh, sharing with us her generous spirit and faith, both at the 8 o'clock service and then again with her preaching in the 10 o'clock. And you know what? Can I get proactive here and interactive? Can we all of us right now, uh, we're not wrapping up. This is not a conclusive prayer, a concluding prayer. But let's all of us, you at home, Brian, let's all pray that God's Holy Spirit be with Bonnie right now and throughout the morning. And not only because she's preaching, but because God's Holy Spirit is also a guide to give her confidence, peace, calm, and to be fully open to God's healing her and giving her wholeness in body, mind, and spirit. And so we celebrate that God is opening her to miraculous healing and that that begins with a vision of a healing, loving, caring, and wise Jesus sitting on the, cow, on the, the big armchair big chair. of love coming to say hello to Bonnie today. Let's all of us yeah. celebrate that presence of Jesus right now with ourselves and especially for our sister, Bonnie. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Yeah, I missed a lot of comments there. Skylar says, I want to meet you guys in person. 
Amen, says Nancy Ellen. I look forward to meeting you, Skylar. Yes, Skylar, I thought we'd be seeing you at 8 a.m. along with Ryan and Cammy. I hope you guys can make it next week. Heather says, Skylar, we need to have a social when possible when we reopen to welcome all our new folks and welcome everyone back. Amen, Heather Bowman. Skylar says, yes, Nancy Ellen. Great idea, Heather. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. And those are amens for the, the Bonnie prayer, too, as well. Hello, Danny. Welcome. Okay, we should probably begin a wrap-up. Brian, any more um, observations you'd like to share? I, I think I've pretty well exhausted him for this morning. Great so to have you. It was, it was great to be here. It was, that was a home run out of the park, that sermon. So I'm glad I didn't miss it. Thank you again. Thanks for coming. Thank you. It's especially impressive that that many people came to the service because during COVID, a lot of people have told me that they've sleeping later and later in the day, and there's no reason not to. Uh -huh. So right. to get up and get down here and be ready to worship at eight is not as easy as it may have been six months ago. So I have to applaud. And of course, there's a, um, a state of Nevada limit, as well as a diocesan limit, that we will limit ourselves to 50 people per service. And God, in God's great wisdom, I think had us just shy of that mark. And so we didn't break any rules, either ecclesial rules or political, legal, Nevadan laws. God blessed us straight across the board. I understand that's being lifted. So. Oh, the 50? Yes. Uh -huh. Oh, great. At least I saw a headline to that effect. So. Great. I think we're going to be back in business. Oh, Excellent. Okay. Oh. can even go back indoors, I think. Wonderful. I, I, I told people, that because when it started to get a little fuller there, about 10 of 8, Somebody says, what if we hit 50? I said, you know, no matter how many people show up, the most that will actually be here is 49. <laughs> and here's how you count. When you get up into the 40s, you go 47, 48, 49, 49, 49. <laughs> but I want, God is my witness, we did not have to play that game today. Oh, we got close. The governor will make an announcement this week. Bonnie says the governor will make an announcement this week. It's sick. Carol told me and Carol Davis said Sisolak will tell us on Monday. Well, we'll find out and we'll live into whatever the, the rules are. Um, brothers, sisters, thank you for sharing. Again, Bonnie, Brian, thanks for being here. And uh, we'll, of course, be live streaming the service from the sanctuary at 10 a.m. Uh, would one of you like to offer a concluding prayer? Just a... Uh, Thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for this time. Thank you for your presence. And now, Lord, may we go from this place to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Amen. 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 All right, God bless you all, and see you in a few minutes at the 10 o'clock live stream.